Fantastic, everyone. You're all assembled. You're all paying attention, ready to uh, do your learning today. I love it. I love seeing you showing up consistently and doing all this learning. It's fantastic. Let's start with uh, just one of the warm-up questions. We'll go over this one here and remind ourselves how we find missing side lengths with trigonometry. In this question, this angle is 40 degrees. And so it's 40 degrees. I'll write it a little bigger. And we're looking to find this, this uh, unknown side here. This is the hypotenuse that's been labeled for us. And this is the opposite side. So that's kind of cool to notice. And then we might notice, well, if we look at Sokotoa, we have the necessary ratio right there. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I recommend that you set up the equation first. And uh, the equation will look like this. Sine 40 is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Actually write out your trigonometric ratio each time and then substitute in your values. Sine 40 equals x, which is the opposite, over the hypotenuse 8. At this time, we get out an inverse operations pen and multiply both sides by 8. The reason why we choose to multiply both sides by 8 is we were dividing our unknown by 8. Multiplication is the opposite of division, so that will cancel, cancel, and leave us with equals x. I'm sorry, my massive head is just so big. There. And then this is our answer, 8 times sine 40. And that will equal x. Let's see what it, what it equals. 8. My head's in the way, too. Times 40, but I take the sine of it. So we should be getting an answer here like 5.1. Yeah, x equals 5.1 centimeters. You can circle it. That's the final answer. Now, I'll take up the other ones at the end of the lesson, but to get started and show you the new topic, we can also use these trigonometric ratios to calculate unknown angles using the side lengths. So I'll show you an example. If we have a helicopter 150 meters above the beach, First, have fun drawing a diagram. Here is my helicopter. It has landing gear and a rotary blades. And there's the point where it is tall, and that is 150 meters above the beach, but horizontally quite far away from you. One problem in this, in this question is that the distance away is not in the same units. So we will need to convert those to the same units before we solve for what angle we're looking up at the helicopter at. So this uh, 1.2 kilometers is actually 1,200 meters because one kilometer is 1,000 meters. So we have 1.2 kilometers there, 1,200 meters. So now we can put that down on our, on our diagram. We know this is a right angle. And we know this is uh, 1,200 meters. What we're interested in is to find this angle theta. When we look up at the helicopter, what angle are we looking up at? If we want to aim this laser pointer to uh, shine it in the helicopter pilot's eyes. We don't want to do that, but Miguel is very naughty, as the question tells us. Yeah. Oh, that's, this may be too soon. Uh, so, what we will do here is we first notice that this uh, side over here is the opposite, and this side over here is the adjacent. So, we know a trigonometric ratio that relates opposite and adjacent, and that's tangent. So, if we know that tangent of any angle theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, then we can start setting up our knowns in here. Let's go for it. We don't know theta yet, so that's still just going to be tan theta is going to equal 1500, sorry, 150 over 1200. Now that would reduce, and sure, we could do that. That'll be 15 over 120. 15 over 120 still reduces to what is that? 1 over 8. So tan theta reduces to. 1 over 8. 
However, if we use this, there's no problem. That will still work. Now, the next step is we have a function on our calculator that allows us to solve these types of questions. And this is the way they sound when you put them into words. Find me an angle that has a tangent of 1 over 8. And this is the way they look. We would say, here clear, I know 1 divided by 8 is, um, is the tangent that I'm looking for. Go find me an angle that has that tangent. And what you're going to use are in here, the inverse trigonometric functions. So if I go in here and punch this button, it will output 7.1. So now we know we're looking, we need to set this laser pointer at about 7.1 degrees, barely off the horizontal. The, the helicopter is very far away and it's only slightly above the beach. So the angle that we're looking up at is very shallow. So there what you have is theta is equal to the, ta the inverse tangent of one over eight. These inverse uh, trigonometric functions they're notated this way. It's not the same thing as um, the reciprocal of tangent. It's not raising it to the power of negative one. It's the inverse function of that uh, of tangent. So that's how we would uh, solve a question like this. And we would finish it by saying, therefore, we need to aim the laser pointer at 7.1 degrees because that's the answer that we're getting here now let's take a look at uh, this one here angel is putting up her holiday lights perhaps for diwali perhaps for christmas and she has a string of lights that thir that's 13 meters long and she wants to hang them in a relatively straight line All right, let's take a look at this one here. If we uh, want to solve a problem like this, they often start with a great diagram. So trees, we can see there's a tree in this and some holiday lights that we're gonna hang on an angle from a tree. The tree is five meters tall and we have 13 meters of lights and we're gonna hang them in a straight line. So if the tree here is five meters and we're gonna hang a string of lights 13 meters long and roughly straight like that we want to know what angle that they're going to be hung on so we know that that the tree makes a right angle with the ground we don't yet know this angle theta here so let's go ahead and see if we can find a way to calculate that so what angle will the lights be hung at all right let's go so when I have a diagram and it's a little bit messy, I'll sometimes blow up the triangle and just bring it outside the diagram and label the sides 5, 13, and my unknown there. Now I'm looking for what trigonometric ratio relates those two sides? Somebody tell me. How do you know sine? Yeah, we know the opposite. We know the hypotenuse, so we're going to use sine here. Great. The previous question, we knew, we knew the, the two things that were at... 90 degrees to one another, there we'll always use tan. Here, because we know the hypotenuse, it's a little different. So let's go. Sine theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So go ahead and substitute those in. Sine theta is equal to 5 over 13. And then to move sine to the other side of the equation, we want to remember that's an operation being done to that angle. The thing you do to move it is the inverse of that operation, which is sine inverse. So what we'll have is another line in your work. Theta is equal to sine inverse brackets 5 over 13. And remember to put these in brackets. I would make a special note to say always have this in brackets in your calculator. Or evaluate it first and then feed it to your sine inverse function in your calculator. Always have in brackets. 
That number in there is called the argument of sine inverse. We want to do that first before we do that. If you do like sine inverse of five and then divide it by 13, your calculator will say, I can't do that. You're, you're crazy. Why did we use tan inverse on the other side? Yeah, I did. See, tan inverse there? I have it in brackets. I think on my calculator, what I did was I evaluated it first. I said one divided by eight equals, and then I do tan inverse. Okay. Yeah, you could just do equals, but that's like you're forcing the calculator to do that bracketed bit of badness first. However you do that, just make sure that it's, it's doing it that way. Okay. So uh, what we have here, what we're going to punch here on our calculator is... 5 divided by 13. I'm going to go ahead and push equals so that I have that already evaluated. And then I do sine inverse. So I want, what I'm asking my calculator is go find me an angle that has that as its sign. And then my calculator will output for me, oh, this must be the angle you're looking for. Sine inverse, yeah, 22.6 degrees. And then we look at our diagram. Yeah, that looks pretty reasonable. 22.6 degrees, sure, yeah. So therefore we would say, therefore, the lights hang at 23 degrees to the ground. And those are these types of questions. So now I would encourage you to take some meaningful notes for yourself that you'll remember how to answer these types of questions. If you're still not sure, put your hand up and I'll come by and help your table group. Uh, these questions in your textbook are excellent to practice these skills. Any questions before I release you to practice the practice problems? Great. You can get going on them. I huh? 22.3. Oh. Maybe, did you do like 0.38 or something? Yeah, I did 0.38. Yeah, that'll cut down on your accuracy slightly. You would round to the same degree as me? Oh, you would round to a different degree. Yep. Originally, yeah. I got uh, 22.3, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that I would recommend at least keep three decimal places for your, like, arguments of sine inverse and cos inverse and things. All right. I had a heck of a problem this morning. I better turn off this video. Thank you, everyone, for Team Learn at Home. Uh, any questions, hit me up by email.